Друзья, мы переходим к следующему нашему Скажите, пожалуйста, кто не пробовал донор из донор? Вам надо обязательно попробовать. You это must taste it if you have not tasted it. I mean, indeed, it's a delicious product. And um, as they love to say these days, it's healthy. Whole grain, uh, flatbread, fresh veggies, sauces. Uh, our um, specialty sauces, please do taste it. A year ago, when we first announced that we're going to launch this new startups, new concepts, uh, we didn't know anything about coffee. I mean, <laughs> now we know so much more. And people did not believe in the idea. They were saying, Fyodor, it's impossible to launch the thing and be super awesome with it. I mean, how hard is that? But we need to witness what has happened. We have two really powerful teams. And now let me hand over the floor to Magomed. He cannot be with us offline, but in spite of any difficulties, we are getting in touch using contemporary means of communication. So Magomed is going online. We shall hear him so very soon. And soon Magomed Kastoev will be telling about the achievements of Donor in the previous year. Overall, the shawarma market is a beautiful market. It's a fabulous market because in that market there are no large-scale networks that would approach the product systematically. Truly for us, it is the innovative product. We're creating the new production model. We are literally inventing the equipment. We establish the processes. And all of these things remind me of McDonald's in the 50s. I mean, burgers back then they were not as commonplace. It was not a food that was safe and uh, as accessible as it is today. I mean, that was the food that they sold at the uh, gas stations and you could easily get food poisoning as a result. It was similar to shawarma market at the moment. So what did McDonald's do? They entered this popular product segment, systematized it, and they made a really cool and stable system-based business. Safe for client, first and foremost. So, are we ready to have Magomed live? Let us give him the round of applause. He really wanted to be with us today. Магомед, my dear friend, can you hear us? I can hear you very well, very well. Can you see us? We are all happy to see you. Virtually, I send the clicker over to you and I leave the stage. Thanks, friends, thanks. Yeah, welcome, Magomed. Welcome. Yes, do welcome me, do. Do that. Thank you very much, friends, for the support. I'm happy to be with you, considering that I'm not inside the room. I'm still feeling you, I'm still hearing you, and it's great to be here. It's hard to talk. When in the previous speech we had uh, two words, lobster and manga, in the same sentence, but let me try to bring you all down to the sinful earth and uh, from those clouds. And let me talk about uh, shawarma, the most popular products, the most democratic out of all products. A year ago I was standing up on this stage and I was telling you that shawarma is the true product populace, loved by many. And I've told you that until now, until recently, there's not been a federal player in the Russian market, player number one in the shawarma market, and I was also explaining our plans, and I was telling you that we're hoping to tap the markets and conquer it, like once McDonald's did in the hamburger market. A couple of months ago, on the 4th of December, 
We opened up our doors for the first time. And it was a truly uh, interesting and a truly grand event. We've never expected such a big flock of guests. You know, there is a technical lunch, such a term, in the restaurant business. You open up for the first two weeks to check whether you've made any mistakes, to check on your IT system, to check whether your standards and supplies are aligned. But it didn't work out. I mean, we couldn't do it quietly. Almost all possible media wrote about our opening. I was even left with an impression that it's like launching a rocket to space uh, in uh, the backyard. And I was sent, I was receiving links with lots of interesting media coverage to my personal email. And seven months passed. And it's time to um, draw some conclusions. Now it's um, time to tell you what we've achieved and uh, what we've um, made so far and uh, what we still need to be doing. Revenue is one of the most important indicators and one of the most important measure of success. Starting from December and onwards, we've been on the upward trend and already in June uh, we hit the ceiling of 5 million a month reaching 5,182,000. Is that a lot or not? It might seem that for a shawarma place or a shawarma company it's not a big figure, but our objective is that actually one outlet can produce up to 6 or 7 or even 8 million. It's just that we need to put our mind to it. 65 square meters, that's the overall that's the overall floor area of our shawarma place, I think it's great. Here's the number of orders. We've been growing with our revenue, not, not just because our average check grew or not because our prices dropped. Actually, when it comes to the number of orders, we've also been growing there. And already in June, we reached the ceiling of 16,000 a month. Let's recalculate it to days. Here is the average daily amount of orders. In June it's 532, which is, I think, quite a positive result. Have a look at the days in June. On the 4th of June, 728 orders were produced by ourselves. And I think it's a positive, a very good result. All those figures include delivery, and as far as delivery stands, I'll tell more about that later. But it's also important to reach uh, revenue per store and uh, profitability per store. And here's the revenue per store, 4 million in June, breaking the line of 4 million already um, during the six months of the year. So. I briefly told you about the figures, I briefly gave you the facts and figures. What did we manage to achieve in seven months? First and foremost, we managed to produce a modern, trendy brand, which is now loved by all our guests. Everybody comes back to us. We put a great stake on high-tech equipment and that stake paid off. We are happy, very happy with the results. You see our donor grill on the slides. It's our, f well, donor grill 1.0. Why is it so unique and how come it's so innovative? Well, first, it consumes just 5 kW, 5 kilowatts of power. Those of you who work in the restaurant business, those of you who are not novices to it, those of you who have lots of equipment in the kitchen, they understand that it's a great achievement. Its cost is three, four, and even five times lower than all foreign produced analogs. And the third feature of the grill is that it helps you to make some of the processes run in parallel. For example, you can heat up the donor, the shawarma, and also fill it in at the same time. Why is it so important? Should we use a more classical model or process of uh, preparing a shawarma, of cooking a shawarma? When you have uh, plenty of orders to deliver, like 5, 10 or 20 at the same time, when we have that situation quite often, 
the production time, the throughput would have been, or the lead time would be 25 to 30 minutes per order. Considering the throughput, uh, considering the lead time it required, the guest would never come back. That's why we keep improving our service time and our cooking time. And the third feature is that it allows you to work as a uh, production belt or rather a conveyor belt and you can prepare several donors at the same time. For example, you can take a piece of dough and you can start rolling it out. One donor maker can produce several pizzas at the same time. Here you can take three flatbreads and you can start filling them in and it means three donors would be soon out fresh from the oven. Here is the uh, owner and the founder of uh, Delavaya Rus company, he is our technical partner, a person who has been our partner for many years, who we deeply respect, and uh, here is our piece of equipment, and they managed to produce it specifically for us. Mikhail sends the second version of the donor grill, and here is uh, donor grill 2.0. That's the innovative and the most advanced version. Why is it so advanced? Well, because it became wider. In this way, we're de-bottlenecking some of the complex operation stages, almost, well, make it twice as speedier. And you can see how the grill is going to look like on the 3D model over there. Why else is unique? What other engineering ingenuities are being used in here? Well, as opposed to pizza making, you know, a pizza maker uh, puts up cold ingredients on the flatbread. Here in our uh, Berlin donor, we use both hot and cold fillings. We use, for example, hot and cold aubergines and also some hot chicken meat is used as a filling for a donor and we managed to combine all that and we managed to balance the two types of ingredients on the same flatbread and that's quite a task I would say, an engineering task and Dele Rus managed to beautifully deal with that. There are no analogs to this piece of equipment around the world and uh, as previously it will be an exclusive delivery, an exclusive supply from our vendors to us. It's our proprietary piece of equipment. Now the product itself. Here on the picture I'm showing Vladimir. Vladimir is the founder of White Waters Company. The company is unique. The thing is that when, just a year ago, I've been telling about the project, I told that we don't really want to buy any ready-made products. We want to make our own flatbread to make our own sauces and fillings and marinades and we've been searching, we've been scouting for vendors and suppliers who will be, uh, who will be able to do so, who will be able to replicate our recipes using no oil, no fat, no milk, especially for some um, customers of ours who have specific dietary needs, for example, who have uh, protein intolerance or animal protein intolerance. And I think that's an important thing, an important um, consideration. We also have a vegetable donor, and this kind of flatbread goes very well with a vegetable filling. So Vladimir's company, White Waters, managed to replicate the recipe we sent them out. And further, when he was announcing for me to take the stage, he said, that donor 42 story looks very like McDonald's. We have plenty of things in common, but this is an important moment where I need to elaborate a little bit. I just need to say when McDonald's was just taking flight, a lot of things were not out there. And there were not uh, so many suppliers who would have provided, for example, specific fat for French fries. There, wouldn't, there, 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 there were no equipment suppliers. Dick and Mac had to come up with their own tools and their own instruments. Why White Waters is so interesting? Because before Donor 42 came about, it didn't exist. We found Vladimir. We conversed for a very long time. We tested and probed and experimented, and once Vladimir said, Guys, I finally realized that actually making shawarma, that's not my business. My business is 
making ideal products for other businesses. And Vladimir decided to no longer keep his own shawarma places, but he dedicated himself completely to producing ingredients for us, meaning flatbread, an amazing Turkish bun. And it also has to be noted that Vladimir's company is the only one that managed, out of plenty of suppliers that we talked to, managed to replicate our berry drinks. Please do pop in our shawarma place after my speech and try them out. They're amazing. Also, we were trying to expand across different product lines. We have our own chicken broth, we have our own sauces that we prepare every morning, fresh. We also provide for a uh, large lineup of uh, deep-fried products and salads. Actually, some of our salads have been uh, adapted to cater for the Russian taste. Here's Iran. Here's the milk drink that we're also selling, and just after finishing this presentation, I'm going to take a sip from this bottle. And some of my amazing, some of the beautiful bakery, baked goods that we're making uh, right in front of our guests. And uh, we also serve 100% Arabic coffee. Um, We've also introduced a second size of the donor. It's a little smaller than the standard one. Here's the standard size. Here's the size. It's 400 plus grams. Some of our guests, well, it was too much for them. They were bursting at the seams. They said, give us something smaller. So we produced something smaller. And of course, uh, it, couldn't ha it couldn't have but impacted our revenue streams. Uh, you might be left with an erroneous impression that we're only selling donors and shawarma and nothing else. The menu is not so like extensive. There is some truth to that. 70% of all the menu, of all the sales we make, um, is donors. But what's also popular and uh, what our guests also like to buy are various appetizers. We have lots of deep-fried products to offer and cold drinks. For example, uh, dried fruit drinks and uh, fresh fruit drinks and Aira, the milk drink that I was proposing, promising you to drink after. I can't just say that we're just a shawarma, yet another shawarma place. No, no, no. We're QSR place where we not just serve donors, but we also serve a huge range of other products, drinks and food. Let's talk about the mobile application. Originally, we wanted to focus on making our place a digital place, a digital donor place. Just imagine, you have most of your guests using a mobile, mobile application, and it helps you to digitize their behaviors, to see their patterns. You will know what they eat and when they eat it. When they go to our restaurants, you will preempt their wishes and you will even be able to make personalized offerings for them. You would even be able to propose an a, a, amended and adjusted and adapted a loyalty program to every specific guest, which will make their experience ever so better. Gosha and Arseni, two guys, the founders of Where Shaverma startup developed the application. Now they are part of uh, our brand. Originally, their IT software was um, an aggregator of uh, uh, maps and yeah, they just showed on the map where donor places were. But there are so many more features right now. Let me just tell you about a couple of things that we've uh, presented. Donor coins. We've been itching to make donor coins for a very long period of time. It's actually a 5% cashback loyalty program. Spending 100 rubles, you get 5 rubles back. For every 100 rubles you spend, you get 5 rubles back um, on your personal account. Our analytics showed that our guests really love that system. They use it, they uh, accumulate donor coins, and it's a popular feature. But it's just one component of our loyalty program, and there is more to come. Out of, them, out of some new features that we offer, we have Shaky Donor. 
What's a shaky donor? Uh, imagine a guest enters the store. He already tried. Uh, he's already tried everything, and he's bored. He wants some new mixes, some new products, and uh, he doesn't really want to like beat around the bush. He just takes the phone, he shakes it, and our AI algorithm selects a set of dishes and drinks and beverages for the person, for the guest. We have a smart combo solution, which is an interesting and unique feature offered through our, our application. I've never seen any similar applications anywhere else. If you've seen it somewhere, drop me a line, because we looked around and we didn't find any. What's a smart combo? Let me explain. So when a guest doesn't really have to think about what's available on the menu and what combos are um, the up for grabs, he just start piling his basket, he just starts putting in stuff in the basket and then some of those drinks or dishes he selected turn out to be a combo. Coca combo and the application tells the guest, okay, let me assemble the combo for you and it's going to be cheaper for you. You might think, isn't it dumb because we're losing money? Yes, we are losing a little money, but the loyalty we gain balances off, everything will lose. And guests love us, love us for that. They love us for it. And they, it, it's becoming a very popular thing amongst our guests nowadays. Let's talk business now. Let's talk about what our application has to offer apart from just fun stuff. Here's donor score, which guests don't see, but we know what's happening down there. As soon as the guest makes an order through an application, um, places an order through an application, he can uh, grade the order, also leaving his or her comments and grade the taste according to a five-point uh, scale. And uh, he or she can uh, grade the taste, the service and the easiness of use. Imagine we hadn't done that. Imagine there's been a drop in our taste, properties or service. Uh, quality and of course it would have directly impacted our revenue, our uh, number of returned customers, etc. But we would have noted it only three or four months after, so it wouldn't be a, uh, it would be a, mm, like um, uh, a feedback indicator that looks backwards. Here we can preempt. And uh, we will know if the guest didn't like something, if uh, he's been served for too long, or something else. Um, it's a front-facing indicator, it's a front-facing um, measurement. And it allows us to solve all the problems before they even uh, surface, and it's a great helper in our business. And of course, it's all going to be available for our franchisee partners as soon as it is out. Now, the second business application in our software, uh, Biz Analytics, it's a tab in the usual app we have, Donor42, you don't require any additional systems to be installed. It works for our partners, for our franchisee, for our managers, territorial managers and the like. Um, the tab is already available right now and uh, you can have a look at your major facts and figures, the major metrics online, the dashboard shows you the revenue, the number of checks and the average check. It's a screenshot that I just made from my application on the 18th of December and I don't remember when, it, when exactly it was, at 6 p.m. or something. So it's a snapshot of what's happening and you can also drill down to the like for like. You can have a look at what happened with your store a week ago. You can also upload revenue from the application. We wanted to deliver you a digital donor restaurant. So for five months we've been observing the growth in the revenue. The guests have already um, praised our application. They're ready to move online. And this growth in revenue tells us that the mobile application, well, as they say, jumped. Uh, the users like it. 
But of course, revenue is good, the cash is king, but there are three more indicators that need to be uh, mentioned and that need to be given a very careful attention. 800 new active users a week. So what it means? It means that the user knows about our application, installs it and makes an order in it. It's not just installing and forgetting, but also installing and making an order. 800 new active users a week. I think it's a fantastic result. Out of this 800, our weekly return rate, the retention rate, is 12%. Actually, it was 10 in June. Here in July, it's already 12. Amazing, isn't it? Now, revenue from the application is one of the key metrics that we decide to use as a KPI. When I was delivering the presentation in the end of June, I was only showing 31%. July? sees a significant jump in this figure, and it's 40 percent, which I believe is a great result, something to be really proud of. And of course, the delivery trend is something that we couldn't forget, something that we couldn't miss. So we wanted to test our product with delivery. We went an easy way. For the first time, throughout the existence of Dodo brand, we decided to integrate Dodo IS with Yandex Food and Delivery Club. It allowed us to receive and produce orders very quickly. The chef gets the order from the application and delivers it. The guests really like that. They like our product being delivered. See the rating? It's 4.9 in Yandex Food application, in Yandex Food service. It speaks for itself. Our guests love our product and they keep ordering it. The rating has been uh, up for not just a week, a couple of weeks in a row. Here is the revenue for delivery service and that's how much we earn from various aggregators. In June, we hit one million. And it's just the beginning. There is plenty of room for improvement. Looking back, taking stock of the success we had in the aggregators, we now are absolutely positive that we can make our own delivery service. Already in a month, we will be launching our own delivery with our own courier service. And that's how it will look like for a guest. You'll be able to geotrack your courier, you'll be able to grade your courier, etc., etc. It's all good, you're going to tell me, Megamet, but what about the profits? Let me update you um, on uh, that matter. For seven months, we've been focusing and putting all of our efforts to improve our product, to make sure that our standards are up and running, to grow revenues and launch various marketing campaigns. We didn't imagine that the monster we created is huge and it continues growing. The creature keeps becoming bigger and bigger with every passing month. So we decided that we need to make a business case out of that. Our stores need to deliver in terms of profits. In our business, in QSR, two key KPIs are labor costs, which is cost per one employee with taxes, and unit costs, which is COGS of F&B. Totally, these two, two indicators should be less than 60%. That's the objective. And if they're smaller than 60, we're profitable, and our business case uh, balances. Now the indicator is 70%, but it is not bad. We know what to do, we have a plan, and we know in what time we actually think it's going to happen quite fast, and what exactly has to be done to be able to arrive to the KPI we set for ourselves. All right, so seven months after, I can say that the concept is up and running. Here's a slide from my presentation, which I delivered a year ago, when I was telling you what we wanted to do. We wanted to produce a brand and a restaurant where you're going to feel comfortable, where it's going to be tasty and safe. I'm showing you this slide again and again, but today this slide doesn't hold the world we want. It has two words, we did. And we did a restaurant where it became 
really comfortable to uh, come and eat. Um, it's really tasty and it's really safe. We observe all the temperature limits and uh, we observe all the um, safety standards. A year ago, when I was telling you this story, I uh, came up with two hypotheses. I was asking myself a question. Is there still a place for a large donor or shawarma player in the Russian market? Um, in terms of pizza category, Dota is number one, and it's top of mind. In our mind, uh, McDonald's will always be associated with burgers, but we still believe, knowing how our donor place uh, performs, seeing and observing its growth, we believe that this place, this spot number one as a large federal player in the donor category is going to be ours. And I think um, we are destined to become successful. Our hypothesis number two was, are we good enough to compete with the three big players in QSR world? Today this hypothesis stands true. We truly believe that these three brands are our competitors. We're playing in their own price uh, levels. Uh, we keep up with their speeds and very soon we'll be tapping the spaces, the venues, where these three brands are allocated. We're currently in the search for some of the shop floors of 150, 200 and 250 square meters to uh, position ourselves. Uh, now, let me tell you, tell you about the objectives for this year. Objective number one. We really need to bring our first restaurant uh, to profitability. We really want our EBDA margin to be 15%. Uh, as for goal number two or objective number two, we need to launch 10 test franchise partners or franchise restaurants. And in this 10 pilot restaurants, together with the teams of our franchisee partners, we need to hone our business model, make it ideal almost, and the product ideal. And we need to prepare the launching pad so that next year the franchise starts up and becomes available for everyone. A week ago, we had a call for papers, an application call, to select the first 10 pilot partners. 600 applications came along. It took us a lot many efforts to select the first 10 partners, and this year we'll be starting off with them. It will be a very hard job to do. These first 10 pilot partners will really need to go into nitty-gritty of our business. It means that uh, we will now accumulate, we will start now accumulating a database of knowledge. We'll be making mistakes, and these franchisee partners will have to become the members of our team, and they will be doing honing with us. In the end of my presentation, what I would like to say, you guys, is when I was speaking a year ago on this stage in front of you, it all seemed very clear. We knew what's up on the horizon. We knew that we want to produce a donor restaurant. We knew our objectives and goals, but it were sandcastles, really. It was just in our head. It was just in our mind. Now we opened. Now the restaurant keeps growing. Now we've become a huge monster. But what remains to be said is we're making our first steps. It's just the beginning. There's still plenty of room for growth. Even with the first restaurant, still something can be improved. And I'm absolutely positive that amazing results await us. What I'd like to say is we want to build a top-notch, cool and sexy brand. We can do that. We want to make the biggest chain of donor restaurants in Russia and the world. I have a dream. And in this dream, I see people saying that Donor 42 is the shawarma restaurant. Is the greatest shawarma restaurant of all. Thank you very much, friends.